The kids have just left for school. The kitchen is a mess and I don't care because we need to talk, friend. Things are going crazy and let's get real. Let's go outside. We're going on a field trip. Let's go. Here we go. Okay. Sandals on. And yes, I am a fan of socks and sandals, at least at home. Don't you love my gorgeous tulips? I just had to get out here and just enjoy them. Sit with the sun, fall on in my eyes. I might look a little squinty, but I assume you'll be okay with that because sunlight is just so good for us. So what I've noticed is that I've been talking to people in real life and people in the comments and there is a stress energy going on right now and I'm feeling it too. It's kind of like a restlessness and I don't know if it's kind of like a post COVID situation or if it's just like, we don't know what to do. Like, I think we're kind of stuck. We're like, ah, like I, for so long we were hemmed in and, and we, it, there was almost like a security that came with that. And for me, I have struggled in the past when I have gotten off of track, kids, are busy, um, the house, work, fitting everything in. It can be so, so much. Like my garden, I absolutely love it. And just like the other day, I started getting that like, like stress feeling, like I've got a, I've got all this stuff to do, right? And and so it's like, and I know that feeling, right? Of, of letting people down and feeling like, oh gosh, like I'm just so busy and I, I can't like get all of the things I want to get done. And my house feels like it's a mess. And my, I'm saying no to friends about getting together and I'm saying no to my spouse and my kids are like come and look at this video watch me play video games watch me do this and that and I'm just like saying no and and you know like we we are filled with guilt like for a few years ago we were like let's have a family games night on Friday and like that just went to the wayside for some reason right and so filled with guilt filled with guilt and when I am feeling guilty and then I feel overwhelmed and I struggle. And you know what happens when that, you know what happens when that happens? I come last, I come last. And because I'm like, that's what I deserve. I'm letting everybody else down. And it's just so not cool. And I want you to let me know if you are feeling this energy right now too because I've seen this in a lot of the comments, people who say that they're drowning or they feel like a total failure. And it's just, it's not, it's not good. It's not healthy. And I have been there. I have shared my story about when my kids were little and I just could not keep on top of everything and, you know, going to work at the hospital and coming home. And it was just a big thing. And once I realized, like I actually just saw something, an article, and I thought, oh my gosh, like this is actually having a huge impact on me and I didn't even realize how important the environment was for me. It's like a such a huge part of my life and I didn't even realize it. And it, it just like, it's just such a huge important thing. And so when you put, this is the thing, when you put your environment last, you are putting one of the necessities of your life last food, water, and shelter. So if you didn't have water, for sure, that would number one be your first priority. Like, boom. A few years ago, well, our power went out for like three days and we are on a septic field and blah, 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 blah. And we didn't have the ability to pump water. Like we did not have water. There's a well, but we couldn't pump it because there's no electricity. And I will tell you something that becomes a major priority right away when you don't have water. And it would be the same with food. But the thing about shelters, we're like, well, shelter, like I have a roof over my head. But if you think about it, your environment is playing such a major impact on your brain. And so once I started bit by bit, that's when I started to see a change. And I wanna show you something. I'm gonna show you my garden. And this was started bit by bit. So bit by bit, I put this garden together because you can't do a garden instantly, right? Like we started with the strawberries last year, put the tulips in in the fall, and then I planted more strawberries this spring. Garlic, planted it in the fall, but then I planted the onions this spring. And before making a change, it is hard. Like I totally get it. We are somewhat comfortable in life and the deep 
ego in our brain, and I'm not talking like being egocentric, I'm talking about like the deep, deep part of our brain, which is like a survival part of your brain. It is like, do not change anything. We are safe. Are you crazy? Don't make any kind of changes. Because when you start decluttering and you're going through like the weird feelings that come right? Because there, there are times where you're like, oh, like, I don't know what I should do about this or that. Like I for sure was there. And I started getting that like kind of panicked feeling and your family around you might be like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Like, everything's fine. Don't do it. It's fine. It's fine. Not true. And it's funny because I was talking to my mom the other day and we were talking about like family and like my dad passed away and like what we did with his things and you know we went through and we kept a few and so she was saying like she she's grappling with the idea about the sentimental things and I know like you probably can like completely understand this too I have this beaker doll and I've shown it before I will put a picture here and my husband gave me this like if it wasn't our first date it was like our second date or something like that like really really early in our relationship she said how would you feel if if that beaker doll you passed away and that was given to somebody and they just decluttered it and i'm like oh my gosh so first of all like this is the question i get all the time because so many people they have things left like they're all of their parents belongings and they're like i have my own stuff to do but then i have all of my parents stuff to deal with and the thing is if that was left to one of my kids and they decided to declutter it that would be okay because that represented my husband's and mine relationship. And so when I'm gone and when he's gone, the relationship is not there. And the kids, it's okay if they don't feel the need to keep it. Like they don't actually feel like a sentimental pull to it. I'm okay with that because it's a thing. And it's, it's important that we recognize that yes, like not everything we declutter feels good. Even like a funny story, we, we just sold our minivan because our oldest is moving off to college, which in and of itself is like a ton of feelings, right? But we sold that van and it was like a really great thing for us. Like it helped us get the kids around and you do, you get attached to things like you do. Like I'm the first to say it. And so like when we handed over the keys, I was like, oh, like I feel a little bit kind of bad about that. But then you know what? Now my husband said to me the other day, do you miss the van? And I was like, no, like I'm glad it's gone, right? Another interesting comment I've had is that people are really scared about big things happening. Like obviously COVID threw so many of us off, right? And they're terrified that if they declutter things, they might need them if there's another pandemic or something else major happens. First of all, I bet a lot of the things that you're keeping, you won't need if there's another pandemic. The other thing is you're really not doing yourself a service if that is how you're living your life. If, I mean, it's one thing to be prepared and be like, okay, I have like some extra food. Like I have some in my basement I got ready. But if you are just so terrified that there is going to be something major happening that you're going to need, you know, some things that you had from the 1980s or the 1990s or whatever that's in a box. Like, I mean, I really am such an advocate for people getting counseling about things that are really, really uh, hard to overcome because it's incredible how much you can just talk to somebody and in like a couple of hours, like a couple of sessions, be like, oh my gosh, like I had no idea. This is amazing. All right. Should we go in the greenhouse? Let's lighten the mood here and let's go in the greenhouse. Here we go. Welcome to my beloved greenhouse. Actually, I'm going to leave the door open. It's warm in here. It is a little messy in here because this is a work zone. I have been planting up tomatoes and just loving it. But the best thing, okay, once you start, once you get over those hurdles, once you decide like, yes, I am embracing this, I'm going to change my life, then the changes in your life are absolutely amazing. And I'm gonna tell you the best part in a second, but first I wanna tell you a story. Okay, so we decluttered our house and Funny enough, we foster kittens. We had these two kittens. They were called Prince William and Prince Harry. And one night we put them in the bathroom, which is where they stay, got up the next day to our son coming up and saying, the kittens flooded the bathroom. And we were like, what, what? We get up, go down there. Kittens, funny enough, kittens love, we like to put, keep the toilet paper like in a drawer, but 
often we forget to put it away because we're still using this bathroom. And so they shredded up a bunch of toilet paper, got it everywhere. Some of it got in the sink. They love to make like a little nest in the sink. Somehow they pushed, they like bumped the lever. And so I don't know how big the stream was. We asked our son, he said it was like about, about a pencil, but anyway, totally, totally flooded our bathroom. It flooded the basement. There was so much water damage we ended up getting new floors on the main level and in the basement. So it actually was a total gift. But the other thing that was very interesting is like, so when your basement gets flooded, if you have things in there, you have to, of course, like pull them out. And like there were salvage people who come and they help. And the good news is like, there was almost no damage because of the things that we had kept for the most part, like we had gone through so much that it wasn't a big deal. And I actually had friends who had had a fire that same year in their garage. And they said it was almost like a blessing because they were like, well, we could just like get rid of a bunch of this stuff. I really think it's important to recognize that a lot of the things that we have, we're not even using. Life is also way easier after you declutter. It is so much easier to clean your house. It is so much easier to get ready when people drop over. Uh, you're usually just like, there's just a few things laying around. For us, it's like, you know, teenagers, my gosh. Like I make it sound like my house is always clean. It is not because the teenagers are there, but it takes like minutes to get it back to where it was. And the great thing is like, I can sit down and relax because I have been hitting this garden set. I set up the full irrigation system like a couple of days ago. Oh my gosh, like I was exhausted and I could just come in at the end of the day and just relax. I could just sit on the couch and be lazy and watch Dancing Bacon's YouTube and just like no guilt about like piles of things around me, which I know so many people tell me that they struggle with. The very best part though, that I will share with you is the freedom. And I know you're like, eh, okay, this is a freedom. Like you, if you, unless you've done this, you won't understand. It is deep in my core, the lightness that I feel now by not being burdened by all of this stuff. And it's funny because somebody made a comment the other day and I'm just gonna say right now, I don't know why people need to make nasty comments sometimes. I don't see it too often on my channel, but others I'm just like, why would you sit there and comment that to somebody you don't even know? Anyway, this comment, it wasn't rude. It was so, it was just kind of different. He said, I could see why, you know, having an attic or a garage that's jammed with stuff would be a fire hazard. But other than that, I think you're a clutter phobe. And I was at first like, are you, are you serious? Are you talking to me? And then I thought, well, actually I kind of am a clutter phobe. I, the thought of having clutter again really stresses me out. It seriously, I'm like, <gasps> because the amazing life I have now as a result of not having it. So many people I know, they go, well, I'm too busy. I can't deal with that right now. First of all, if you have less clutter, it might not be bothering you. Second of all, how many things are in your life that are keeping you busy? Do you need to be doing? Do you need your kids in all of those sports? Do you need to be committed to all of the things you are? Who knows? Do you need to set some boundaries with some people? Maybe I'm just saying. And so there's a story and about this man who comes across this other man and there's a dog sitting next to him. The dog is sort of like, you know, like whining like a dog would. And the guy's like, what's wrong with your dog? And he's like, oh, he's sitting on a nail. The other man's like, well, why doesn't he move? And the guy says, oh, it's not bothering him enough. I think that's the thing with clutter is people say like, oh, you know, I can just keep living with it like this. Meanwhile, I'm like, but why would you? Like, don't you want your life to feel amazing? Don't you want to have like an incredible freedom in your life? And it's not about less, it's about more. And I want to share that with you guys because it's just so important for me to hear uh, like seeing that people are making great changes. And I, the thing is, I love to connect with you guys. I want to share the amazingness of freedom of this, which is why I make these videos and I feel called to it. And I love to hear about all of you. And when you come to the lives, I love to know where you're from and what you're drinking and in our Facebook group. One important thing is that I have seen amazing, amazing things come from choosing yourself over stuff. And that is from people I've worked with, people I know, people who have commented, and you can make a change. I seriously embrace simple living. 
and I reduced a lot in my own life and in my business overall. So check that out here. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.